the time is eight minutes past eight. The Firefighters Union says lives will be lost if cuts to the fire service in Surrey continue to go ahead. The Making Surrey Safe plans failed. From April the 1st, it's failed. We're here talking about it now for one reason, one reason only. It's failed. It needs to change. End of story. More than 3,500 people have now signed a petition to reverse the plan cuts to the fire service. It was started by the writer Emma Kennedy, who's called them both madness and terrifying. It all came to my sort of proper attention a couple of weeks ago when we had the enormous blaze mm. at Chobham Common. And now I, I should point out that firefighters aren't allowed to talk about what is going on uh, but we have had people come to us in an anonymous capacity and we had one firefighter tell us that the, that the recent blaze at Chobham Common started out as, as, a, as a routine grass fire that they have to deal with all the time but because they didn't have enough engines and they didn't have enough firefighters it turned into the major incident that it became. I'm Kennedy there. Well, Graham Whitfield, who's secretary of the FBU in Surrey, with nearly 30 years' experience as a firefighter, has been spelling out his concerns. We can look at, in, just in the past two weeks alone, we, we can look at the amount of times fire appliances have missed their attendance times to first appliance to arrive at a fire should be there within uh, 10 minutes. We've had fire appliances take up to 25 minutes to get to a, a fire. We had a house struck by lightning in Isha only uh, a week ago. 22 minutes it took for a first fire appliance to get there. Now you have to remember this is Isha, this is, this is sorry, two miles to the board from London. The first appliances that arrived were actually from Twickenham. The third appliance arrived was actually from Surrey, from Chertsey. So people are asking, well, where was the Isha appliance? Where was the, the Walton appliance? Well, exactly. There's no staff to actually crew the fire appliances from those neighbouring fire stations due to the fact of the uh, cuts that have been implemented since April the 1st and making Surrey safer plan. But the Chief Fire Officer, Steve Owen Hughes, says changes were needed following a report by inspectors which criticised the service. Our job is to keep Surrey safe and deliver um, a modern service um, that meets the requirements of Surrey. Uh, they prefer to maintain uh, the current ways of working uh, and are not happy with the changes that have been proposed, uh, which HMICFRS recognise are required. So, 11 minutes past eight, listening to that, Jan Derfel, who is leader of the Green Group on Spellthorne Borough Council. Good morning to you. Good morning. Do you share these concerns? Well, absolutely. Um, we fully support Emma Kennedy's petition. And the concerns about um, arrival times um, beyond 22 minutes is clearly not reflected in the Making Surrey Safer report, which was done about a year ago, and assumes that all arrival times are below 10 minutes. And we believe that the modelling on which that was based should really be reviewed in the light of the actualities that have occurred in the last 12 months. Here's the thing, Jan. If I was to walk out onto the streets today and say to anybody pretty much in the street, do you want to see cuts to the fire service? Do you want to see cuts to the police? Do you want to see cuts to the number of doctors and nurses in our hospitals? The answer, I'm guessing, would be a resounding no. In other words, it's very easy to back, and we understand why, to back as many firefighters and police and, and, and NHS workers as possible. The reality, though, is that sometimes things need to change and changes need to be made to improve the service. I think there's no uh, no objection with in, in improving the service. I mean, the report is meant making Surrey safer. But then if, if the point of the report is to save money and that they say that, well, they would increase spending on community and business safety, um, but would save expenditure of about three million pounds a year uh, in terms of the modelling, well, then it shouldn't be called making Surrey safer because uh, increased response times clearly don't make Surrey safer. And even on the um, on the the, uh, the the data that they put forward, for example, in Runnymede, the uh, the response time would increase from six to eight minutes in the middle of the night. Now, now that can mean uh, lives lost, clearly. 
So, but, so but statistics are very useful, though, aren't choice. they? So statistics are very useful, though, because if you use uh, data from from several years and you look back on that, and again, it's it's only a best guess because again, sometimes dreadful things can happen that you can't predict. But you have to look back and say, well, hang on a minute. Over the last few years, we've only needed this number of fire engines, say, at two o'clock on a Saturday afternoon, but we had this many. Then the logic says you make the change based upon those statistics from year after year after year. So I think that's exactly the reason why we should look at what's happened in the last 12 months. I mean, as you said, uh, massive uh, events have occurred like the Chobham Common, which burned for 10 days. But other wildfires have happened in August. So Horsell Common burned for two days and Whitmore Common. And also uh, there's clear evidence that due to climate change and even uh, one of the community risk assessments, done by Surrey County Council and the Fire and Rescue Service in February 2019, says with the current international predictions for the effects of climate change, uh, temperatures will rise and this will be likely to uh, increase outdoor fires. So rather than cutting fire services, this should be a time when we look at the latest evidence, i.e. what's actually happened after those cuts in the last 12 months, and then actually increase the services and, and spend money where it needs be to, to deal with emergencies. All right, let, let's just pause for a moment. Let's have a quick listen to what Surrey Fire and Rescue Service have been telling us. In a statement, senior managers at Surrey Fire and Rescue say they will be responding formally to the petition when it is tabled at a future council meeting. They say there was sufficient fire cover at the Chobham Common Fire to bring it under control and that the safety of the public and welfare of everyone is and always will be paramount. The statement goes on to say a welfare officer is always on site to ensure staff well-being and that crews have food and drink rations on fire engines at all times and provisions are in place to ensure that they have ongoing food and drink at longer incidents as well as sun protection. Managers say the Making Surrey Safer Plan looked at 999 calls over the last five years using predictive data. They say their plan rebalances these resources so that better fire cover can be provided during the day when they are busier and focus on preventing incidents from happening in the first place, including the hiring of two rural affairs officers who will work with landowners to reduce future wildfires. So a long old statement there from Surrey Fire and Rescue Service. But Jan Durfer, let's just go back finally to that example of the Chobham fire, which has been talked about quite rightly so much. Isn't it the case that when you get one of these very extreme incidents, you then turn to your neighbours, be it, you know, depending on where a fire is, in Hampshire, in Kent or in Sussex or in London, and they come in and support you at a big uh, fire like that. So if you take the Grenfell fire, of course it needed fire engines from all over the place to come in and deal with such an unprecedented incident. So in many respects, you could argue that what happened with the Chobham fire was a success. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not a, a fire expert, uh, but then again, and I think that's why we should be listening to the fire unions, etc., because they're on the ground and they know exactly what's happening. And why wouldn't we be listening to them when they say that they, they need more resources and aren't sufficiently staffed? I mean, it, to say that, that the response for that... Uh, was sort of adequate. Well, it did take 10 days. I mean, I, I'm not sure whether it's contentious to say, well, if, if a faster response and more resources were available locally, then the fire may well have been contained earlier on. But I think it's a bit disingenuous to state later on that, well, 10 days is fine. Okay. Because I think we, we need to look at whose concerns are being met. If they are to, to uh, affect budget, uh, budget cuts rather than actually... Um, minimizing the, the effect on the residents and the, the assertion that it's improved, data, data cover has improved. I don't think that's correct because even on their own modeling, the, the daytime response would not have improved. It was um, indicated as seven minutes, 27 seconds, both before and after the proposal. But clearly the nighttime cover across all the boroughs would have... Um, decreased. Oh. And I think what you said about Grenfell is also a serious concern. There are a number of um, buildings in Surrey, at least three, that have been found to have the same cladding as Grenfell Tower. So is this really a time where we want to have a Russian roulette, where we possibly gamble to say, you know, one and a half million or up to three million a year? Thank you for your time. We'll leave it there. Jan Derfelver, who is leader of the Green Group on Spellthorn Borough Council. If you've got a view, do get in touch. The time is 8.17.